You're tuned into the Yace Time Podcast. Welcome back to the Yace Time Podcast, live and direct from uh, Yace home base here in the Jane and Finch community. Um, thank you for tuning in. We are happy and excited to be back. Um, my name is Zane. I got my co-host here. It's me, Lita. Yep. And uh, today we are honored to have a legend from the community, uh, Mr. Augustine Obang. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself to the people? Oh, man. Uh, my name is Augustine. Augustine Obang. That's my right name. My full name is Augustine. Antri Boisiakon Kwame Obang. You feel me? I'm from Ghana. I grew up in Finch, Jane and Finch to be exact. Um, yeah, man, uh, I'm many things. I like to consider myself uh, to be fluid like water, like aqua. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So um, depending on the situation, I could be many things. But who I am, I'm a person who's a student of life. You mm-hmm. feel me? Like I like to learn and I like to teach. Um, on paper, I am an educator um, and I'm a social worker. I'm also an author. Um I'm a brother. Um, I'm a community liaison. I'm a, a community advocate. Um, and there's someone that just wants to empower the, uh, not only myself, but the, com- uh, the community, my friends, my family, and just everyone around me. So, yeah, man, I'm a change agent. And more deeper, I'm, I'm changing lanes, man. Love That's it. Dope. We love it. We love it. That's dope. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll get into uh, uh, a bit more on, on, uh, on your book, Changing Lanes, as well. Um, but, uh, if, if we, if we can begin with, uh, maybe, maybe about a little bit about your, your background, your experiences growing up in Jane and Finch specifically, um, and how that shaped the person that, that sit in front of us today. Um, so where do you want to start? So where I grew up or? Yeah. Yeah. Where you grew up, some of your experiences in, uh, in here in Jane and Finch. Neighborhood. Um, in the neighborhood, the community. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. So like pretty much. I grew up in Jane and Finch. Um, Jane and Finch is a place that gets a negative rap. You know what I'm saying? So growing up, it was it was a lot of things we were battling, a lot of stereotypes, a lot of labels. Um, but the Jane and Finch that I grew up in was amazing. So I didn't really understand where those labels and, and those um, stereotypes came from because I grew up in a neighborhood that was a community. Right. You know what I mean? Um, to be exact, I'm from Southside Jane. You know what I'm saying? But to be more exact, I grew up in Connection, you know what I'm saying? And I went to Fir Grove, um, and then I went to Oakdale, and I chilled with my, I, I made a lot of good friends from the bottom of the lane, you know what I mean? And um, that's where uh, I kind of got my name, Video Game, you feel me? Mm-hmm. And uh, it's because of how I used to play on the basketball court. And I, I, got, a, I got the name Raptor Ball by one of my, my guys, one of my guys, you know what I'm saying? Um, from one of my main guys, you know what I'm saying? So he, he, uh, he gave me that name. Um, he knows who he is. You know what I'm saying? You know who you are, fam. Yeah, you know his mm-hmm. love. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, man, he did, he gave me that name because of how I played. It's it very fundamental. I learned a lot of good fundamentals and, um, I played basketball, played all types of sports, baseball, rookie ball. Grew up in MTHA, then the changes to TCHC, TCHA. Basically, I'm, I was, I'm a metro housing baby. You feel mm-hmm. me? Yeah. And um, yeah, man. Like, I, like, there's so many things I could speak about in terms of how I grew up playing at playing at a community center, playing basketball, um, having great mentors, um, different coaches, um, playing rookie ball, getting to to um, play in the Sky Dome. Um, Big up to my one of my mentors, Stevie. Um, he's one of my coaches. Um, there's so many people I can name, so I, so I don't really want to drop names because yeah. there's so many names. You know what I mean? A lot of people that influenced me. But if you really want to know about that, you got to read the book. You feel me? But uh, Jane and Finch is 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 a beautiful community, um, a multicultural melting pot with a lot of people who are just trying to strive for better. You know what I mean? And um, that's the Jane and Finch that I know. That's my community. That's where I'm from. And I always have love for Finch because Finch is in my blood. Yeah, you know for me? sure. 
Yeah, for sure, for sure. Okay. Just a, a a quick question. So, you said, were you born and raised in the area, or you were born in Ghana? Then, nah, man, I was born. So, if you want to get deep with it, like I think I was. What was the name of the hospital? So, it's called like Branson Hospital. I think it was in Scarborough. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, man, I lived in Chalk Farm. That's where I lived first. Then moved to moved to Connections to the Finch, and I've been in Finch like pretty much my whole life in my adolescent years and then moved on to other things. But um, yeah, for my, my parents are from Ghana. You know what I mean? G-H-A-N-A -A, from Ghana. <laughs> yes, I am a Shanti. I yes, a royalty. All right, listen, all I use is cocoa butter. <laughs> this this is the real deal, cocoa butter. For all the people that are using the palmers and that watery stuff, this is that real cocoa butter, yeah. yes. So this is what I use, but so I'm from Ghana. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, man. Like, yeah, I'm from Ghana, but I'm from Finch, and I'm from I'm I'm Canadian. I'm I'm I'm, I'm met, like I said, I'm many things. I don't like to just say I'm one thing because I'm not just one thing. No, I, for sure, yeah. for sure, yeah, yeah, all of us. Um, one thing that you also are is uh, Yay Salam. Come on, right? And and uh, you were a part of Yay when it was in its infancy. Really, sure. what well, what was it like back then? What, what was Yay like? It was. Give Listen, that. Yes, <clears throat> yes, yes, yes changed my life, man. Mm. You know what I mean? So like you said, I was there from its inception. Um, shout out to Mr. Jones and shout out to Coach. You know what I mean? Like those guys were were, were visionaries, pioneers, um, people that wanted to unite the community. So like if you really deep it, like a lot of people don't really know yes. So like when you see yes and you look at yes, what do you see? What's the main color of yes? Purple. It's purple. Yeah. All right, let me break it down. So there's south side, there's north side. South side is red. Most places south side is red. Most places north side is blue. Now let's go back to elementary colors. Mm -hmm. When you add red and blue together, what does that make? Purple. purple. So just think about the ideology and the thought process behind the inception of Yes. It's about unity and community. You understand? And that's that for me, and, and when I was growing up, that's what it was all about. Uniting North and South. You understand? And using athletics, academics, and character education to put it all together, you know what I'm saying? With the young people in the community. So like yeah, man, we had started off at Westview, very humble beginnings. <laughs> um, shout out to Focus on Youth. Yeah, you know I mean, you guys did a uh, did a good thing in in in, in its in infancy. That's how we started. We got some fun with that. But anyways, um, North, um, what was I saying? Um, inception of Yay. The inception of Yay. So yeah, man, it was a great opportunity for me. Like for me, I can speak about my reality and how it affected me. Mm -hmm. um, Yay's came at a critical time in my life. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Where I was kind of, you know, when you're young, growing up in, in um, you know, impoverished environments and you're trying to find a way to make it out. Um, sometimes you got to do certain things, but Yay's gave me an opportunity to work and have gainful employment and empower um, not only myself, but a younger generation. Mm -hmm. Right. Growing up, I was just a baller. I didn't really care about community like that. I didn't understand what, like, the impact of uh, role models and mentorship and, and all that was about. But Yes gave me that that lens, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And shout out to Mr. Jones, because he's, he's like one of the most, like, I have many mentors, but uh, he was a critical mentor in terms of me getting into education and and kind of um, being a, a, a role model. You know what I mean? And when you read the book, you you find about the Mr. Jones story. Yeah, yeah. for real. Yeah, yeah. Shout out Mr. Jones. Mr. He's, Jones. he's touched a lot of sure. lives. The Godfather. In, in in this community and, and beyond. beyond, like way beyond, and and just constantly, um, constantly improving mm -hmm. and evolving and evolving. Yeah, evolving, right? Um, you 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 mentioned the book. Um, in the in the book, also you talk about um, pride as as an asset. Mm. Um, how are you able to take something that most people see as a, a negative and um turn it into something that was positive for you? 
And you're referring to Pride, right? Pride, yeah, yeah. Okay. So a lot of people, like, for example, I played basketball. So um, initially, a lot when, when you're playing basketball, a lot of people, when, you have, when you're prideful, they think you're cocky. Right. Right? Oh, this guy's a hot dog. He's hot dog in it or hot sauce and whatever it is, right? But the way I look at pride is different than many people. Mm -hmm. The way I see pride is, is I'm African, brother. You know what I mean? And more specifically, I'm from Ghana. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And in life, you got to know your history. You got to know your past so you can inform your present and your future. I come from a lineage of kings. You know what I'm saying? Like real talk, not even no joke. Like I, I wish I had the picture I could show you. My grandfather robed up in the kente with rings. Like this is nothing. I think I have ice, nothing. 100% gold, crown, everything. You know what I'm saying? Royalty. The king, royalty. You yeah. understand? So when I say pride, taking pride in where I'm from and taking pride in who I am, taking pride in your family name. Like my name is Obang. You know what I'm saying? My, know what Obang means? It means genius. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So initially in the beginning, I, I wrote down my name. You know what I mean? So if you read the book, I give you a, a deeper explanation of my name and why I take pride in who I am and where I'm from. And my family name, Obang. Obang. That's powerful. You know what I mean? So you got to take pride in that. And further... If you don't take pride in yourself and you don't believe in yourself, how do you expect someone else to believe in you and take pride in you? So it starts from you. It starts from within. It starts from within. So yeah, I have a lot of pride. I take a lot of pride in where I'm from where, and who I am. Like, And that's it. And that drives me and propels me to be better, to be great. And not only for myself, for the ancients, for the ones that came before me. Mm. And the ones late. coming after. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You feel me? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That that that's huge. You that's huge. I think like just listening to you speak reminds me of an African proverb that mm. says, um, I'm gonna paraphrase, but it says, When the child does not feel warmth from the village, he will burn the village no. to feel warmth. Ooh. You know what I mean? So, but having that sense of pride and feeling welcome and loved and taken care care for in the community, you know, it's easier to to reach for the stars. You know what I mean? But when that's missing, then you see the demise from within going back to what you're saying. Mm -hmm. It's important to know where you're coming from, you know, and where you're coming from, you know that that those that your ancestors were the propellers of where you are today. Right. You know, and I think I, I I've spoken, me and Zane have conversations about this. And I think one time we we're talking about every generation has its own purpose. Mm. You know what I mean? And yeah. I look back from South Africa, my ancestors. They they were fighting a different war. Yeah. You know, we talk about colonization, we talk mm -hmm. about apartheid. Mm -hmm. But then this generation, we are like people in from my age group, they're in different parts of the countries. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because their parents left everything they knew from their country so that they feed their kids could have a better future, could have a better education. But now we are where we are right now and we have access to this information, whether online or whether we have access to books, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Now, our purpose is to take that information yes. and bring it back Come to the village and bring it back to the Come communities on. And, and heal and do better, yep. you know yeah. what I mean? Yep. And right now, our wars is different. Mm -hmm. Our wars right now is distraction. Mm -hmm. you know, having someone else telling you who you are, uh, you know? Mm -hmm. But we have to fight that war and saying, yo, we gotta, we gotta stick to the script. 100%. And the script is take that information and build back home. Come on. You know what I mean? And back home, you don't have to go back to Africa, but home can be, as you said, like Jane and Finch is here, Ooh, connections yeah, back home, you know yeah. what I mean? But just just mm -hmm. listening to what you were saying, right? And like, it's easy for a kid who felt warm from his community to feel like, yo, I can give back. Mm -hmm. Because I felt, felt warmth, warmth when I was, I was cold. There. Ah. You know what I mean? But if you've never felt warmth, you're like, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll burn it care. down. I'll burn it down. Yep. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I think when you were saying what you were saying, it just kind of like, it, it it brought that thought in my mm. head. So I appreciate you guys just like, you know, just bringing in that light. Listen, that, that um, analogy or that, the, 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 no, the proverb, that, um, that saying is, is actually amazing. And the reason why I said, I was in an interview, um, in a conversation with someone, a group of people on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And he gave that same proverb Mm. But it, and it, with a, a variation, mm. you know what I mean? 
So when you said that, ooh, because it touched me differently because I just heard that and I actually have a voice note of it with my phone. Oh, my phone's, I literally have a voice note. I'll show you after when we come off of this. But, yeah. and he said that. So the fact that he said that and you said that, for me, that's confirmation that what it is is true. Mm -hmm. In my life, when things like that happen, it's confirmation. Yeah, synchronicity. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Synchronicity, synergy. It's, it's, it's like, yeah, you're in the right space. You're, you're doing the right thing. You know what I mean? So when you're talking about like, ah, you got me fired up. So when, you, when you're talking about um, it is our duty to, to when, you feel, when, a, when, a, when a person feels warm from their community, They'll do, they'll, it doesn't hurt for them to come back and, and also give back and, and, and make it warm for others, right? So, but when you said, like, when you're talking about education and being a part of the, the diaspora, right? Mm -hmm. People, our parents or our grandparents or whoever, the ones that came before us left the motherland to come here for better opportunities and, and sacrifice, left everything back home, right? Mm -hmm. That's deep. So for me, oftentimes when I talk to some of my friends, and we're just talking about life, you know, this this politicking and, and and debriefing and this reasoning. Sometimes we have conversations like, oh, some people say, oh, no, nah, my parents didn't do nothing for me. I don't have a trust fund, or my parents didn't do nothing for me. I don't. I have to pay for school. Or, my parents didn't. And I, as I got older, when I was younger, I used to think similar type of thoughts. But as I got older, I had perspective, mm -hmm. and I'm like, listen, like what you said, brother. They brought you here. They left everything they knew back home. Yeah. They sacrificed that. Some didn't even know the language. Yeah. Mm. You come into a new culture shock. You come to a new uh, environment. It's cold, bro. I've been here for 34 summers or 34 winters. And it's cold. I'm still, still not used still. to this. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> so imagine someone who lived in, in to me, paradise, coming to here. To, to better themselves because where we are from is considered a developing third world country, whatever that means. Right. Right? <laughs> That's an agenda. But so so to, to, to finish that stream of thought, it is our duty. I mean, it is my duty. I can't speak for no one else. It is my duty to then what? I appreciate my parents. I appreciate the ones that came before. And this got us here. Cooling up in the system, getting to learn and this, that. Yeah, we had hardships. Yeah, things were not always easy. But that's life. Adversity breeds, it builds character. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm trying yeah. to say? So that's okay. So we're here now. Now what are we going to do? We're going to complain and bicker and fight and, and not be excellent? Not be excellent? No, we got to be excellent. And what you said, and this is what I'm all about, man. And yeah, you guys are gonna hear this is this is a game plan. The brain drain in reverse, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm about. Take all this knowledge, all that information from the universities and bring it back home. That's what I'm about. Learning, soaking in information. When you read the book, you understand what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Soaking in that information mm -hmm. to then what? Circle it back to the community. So now or to back home, to home base. But you said something even more profound. I wasn't even thinking about that. When you were talking about, I was talking about bringing back to Ghana, bringing back to Africa, the continent, bringing back to the Caribbean, bring, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But you, you, you made it more realistic. So some people are like, how am I going to bring it back home? What is home? That's that. What is home to you? Right? For me, there's many homes. I have many homes. And just like I have many things. Home for me, my main home is Ghana. Kumase, Efijase, under the tree. You understand? That's my main home. But my next home is Finch. That, and I'll net that Finch. Listen, I got a scholarship to go to Carlton, brother. Could have went to Carlton. Early, early acceptance. I still have the paper in my crib. So if you, if you want to, uh, if you're saying story up, I can story up. Yeah. I got the facts. <laughs> I, got I got receipts. I got receipts. Yeah, I got time today. So, but I went to York. Why? I wanted to be home. I wanted to be home. And everything else unraveled, and here we are today. So, yeah, man, know your purpose. Find your purpose. Find your reason. And just, and just be unwaveringly committed to, to that purpose. 
and and just remember life is not a race it's a marathon no for sure yeah for sure. absolutely absolutely i also want to touch on you know you talk about um taking this knowledge mm. and bringing it back mm. home to africa um i think we also need to um focus on the lost knowledge mm. that is back home and knowledge that needs to be disseminated around the world from there <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 you know it's it's and you know my my parents also brought me here from africa mm. and uh from a third world like 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 you were saying and it's uh, i think there's so much knowledge back there mm. that gets forgotten about mm -hmm. because it's it's over here you, you know you're you're taught that this 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 is the knowledge that you that you need yeah this is and this is all the knowledge you need mm -hmm. and they don't have the knowledge over nah. there yeah but they really do that's a false they that's really do the, the, like like the proverb that they that you uh um you you mentioned earlier on um there's there's so much knowledge that that we need to go back learn ourselves and then bring it back to here 100%, we need to yeah. come tell these finch kids about these proverbs mm -hmm. and and this this lost knowledge mm -hmm. that, that that exists in in Africa i agree like nazi stories and and all these things and 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 you're talking you're speaking right now you're speaking because that's the thing who's to say which knowledge is valid and this is the truth there's many truths exactly right and and a lot of times you know to assimilate you, they want you to eliminate some of who you are and where you're from, your culture. You know what I mean? And it's important to say, yo, bun that. Yeah. Forget about that. This is who I am. This is my culture. This is what it is. Like, for example, I'm going to give one example of how, you know, um, different information or different things or ways of being is valued and not valued. So in my culture, when you're speaking to an adult, an elder, someone who's older than you, right? You're not supposed to really look them in their face, yeah. in their eyes. Yeah. But here in North America, in the North American context, if you don't look at somebody, it seems as you're inferior, you're lying, you got to make straight eye contact. So that's a barrier yeah. of knowledge, right? So how do we, how do you, how do you validate your, your, your bratopsy or how your, your culture, your tradition, and then navigate this new reality. So there's a balance. You have to find a happy medium. And that's where there's conflict. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, you know what I'm saying? So like, it's a fine line that you that you dance. But like, to be real, like, I've, I've been, for me, I can only speak about my reality. I've been in situations where I had to find a way to navigate. And that's why I, I talk about that in the book, in, in the first book. But in the second book, even more deeper. You know what I mean? Where it's like, identity hmm. how do you navigate your identity who you are so for example at home cultural i had to put the towel on my back on my thing come with the bowl give my dad the bowl of water rush his hand the next bowl right here with the soap da da da, da. come yeah that's tradition mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. here they'd be like yo what are you doing bro yeah Call your dad, someone from your, your family, or someone that's an elder in your community, call them auntie, uncle. They're not really your auntie or your uncle, mm -hmm. but it's a sign of respect. It's a sign yeah. of respect, yep. I don't know. I have never called my parents their first names. I don't I don't do that. <laughs> it's not a thing. Yeah. Where they do it's that? Not a thing. <laughs> it's only until like Past my 18 years old that I was able to understand how old my dad is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I would see the birth certificate. I, I don't want to look at it. You, know yeah, yeah. like, you should, should never know how old they are. You know, like my grandmother. I don't think I know how old she is. Like, it took me a while for me to even understand, know what her name is. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, it's a it's a very disrespect thing to call them. And they By the right name. Basis. Like, what? You know? No, it's, for it's, sure. it's, see, so those are the type of, of, of cultural, traditional nuances that you have to navigate yeah. in, in, in this world, right? Mm -hmm. And... For some people, they're like, no, I neglect and reject this, and I accept mm. this for what? Mm. And nah, bro, embrace your roots, who you are, where you're from is very important. For sure. Yeah. And it's important for us to teach those things to the next generation, to our kids. Yes. Even if it is something that's done differently over here, mm. if we have that knowledge from, mm. from back home, from Africa. We need, it's, it's our obligation, I feel. Obligation, mm -hmm. yep. To make sure that our children 
know these things, mm -hmm. you know, Facts. and 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 move accordingly. Facts. I agree, man. Yeah. So, so, what was the what, what was the moment or situation or whatever it may be that that brought the thought to your mind? I gotta write a book, man. I always get asked this question. And I never have the same answer because yeah. <laughs> every time I get asked about it, I think about it deeper. So to give a, an answer, uh, the, the, the most honest answer in this present moment, what inspired me to write the book is what you're asking, right? Yeah. Okay. In school, I always learned or I've always heard that if you want um, to find knowledge or you want to keep a black person or a black man or a BIPOC person um, in the dark, you hide it in a book. You hide the information in a book because we're not going to read it. Mm -hmm. That's what they say. Yeah, that's what they say, yeah. So, But that's what they say. But let me tell you something. Let me break it down. I'm going to come back. So in ancient African traditions like the Malian, Malian Empire and this, that, I, there's something called Giros or Gyros. Mm. Those are ancient people that were knowledge keepers. Mm. They didn't write things down and promulgate it by writing like like the Greeks did in, in Athens or whatever it was, right? They were knowledge people. They had all their gurus. They had all the information. They knew the things about the town or the village or the, the country, the, the region, and they knew everything. So you go to a Jiro and get the information. So when people say, oh, you hide it in a book, no, our tradition is, is, is somebody different. Oral, a oral, a oral culture. We learn, like I learn by listening. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I read, I can read. Obviously, I wrote a book, but I learn by listening. Sit down, humble yourself by the feet of your elders, and you listen to what they got to say. So that's that. So now you ask me, why did I write the book? So I wrote the book because I wanted something that was promulgated in stone that when I die one day, which I will, which everyone has an expiration date, there will be something that is there that precedes me, uh, that that predates me, that's there when I'm not here. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm here for a finite listen. If it, let's be real. <laughs> if you get to 60, you're blessed. Okay. You get to 90, you're blessed. But do you want to live past 90? It's going to be tough. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The quality of life is different. So I'm going to die one day. It's a fact. So what am I going to leave? What kind of impact am I going to leave on this earth, on this planet, on my community, uh, for my children's children? Even though I don't have children. I mean, one day I have some children. Yeah, so if you're yeah, looking, yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> God, I mean, but not nah, for real though. You know what I mean? So I have to leave something. And then also, man, like, Let's read the book. I, t I tell you about the car crash. You know what I'm saying? And and that kind of made it more real for me. But even deeper, different, there's a lot of, like I'm saying, there's many things that influence this. So like my, I had a teacher in grade seven. He's in the book. Let's read it. And, and man, this teacher, serious guy. You know what I'm trying to say? Like I met him across the street, random day. And then he became my teacher. But he was the realest English teacher that I had. Why? Because he was one of the realest. Because he taught me to write like a university student. Because he just finished teacher's college and he just finished university. And that's all he knew is to write on a high level. With transition words and this, that, beginning, end, meet. Like the way he broke down writing was like, was amazing. So I was pretty much getting taught like how to write university style in Grade seven. You feel me? Dope. And even further, I don't want to call names on this podcast, but I want to call I have to call this guy's name. Mr. England, grade five. My grade five teacher. He's the first black no night. The first black male teacher that I ever had at Fergo Public School. Mr. England. And man, we had he had the most rambunctious, that's what he said, the most rambunctious kids. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know, rambunctious, what does that mean, sir? <laughs> uh, rhymey, rhymey, rambunctious. Like, I used to make jokes. I was a, the, 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 a class clown. I wanted to be funny. 
and he used to do something, and and it, this is kind of relates to why I, I um I wrote a poetry book. But Mr. England used to do something every day. You hear the morning announcements, all this thing. But this was his his way to kind of calm us down and get us ready for the day. So you sit in his rocking chair. You know, in elementary school, they all have those brown rocking chairs. Yeah, yeah. Sit in his rocking chair, and he said, everybody come to the carpet. Come to your carpet, cross your legs. Me, I hated crossing my legs. <laughs> so I used to sit in the front so I could sprawl out. Mm -hmm. And he used to read, a, a, what's it called, an a author, Shel, Shel Silverstein. And I think it was like um, something on the sidewalk, the sidewalk, something on the side. There's like a series of, 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 of books. As a white book, white covered with like some sketchy drawing, like uh, like a cart not cartoon, but like like rustic art kind of thing. You know, okay, right? okay. At the end of the sidewalk or something like that, side something sidewalk. And there's a there's a many many of them. So anyhow, um, he used to read the poetry to us, and then he used to do this next thing, and I'm gonna do it now because if you went to o Firgrove, if you went to Firgrove, or you know Mr. England, you're gonna remember this. So he did this thing. He used to do like. I went to the beach. I went, and then it's a call and response, right? So I'm gonna do it. You guys are gonna do it. I'm gonna be Mr. England for this. All right, all right, you guys all right, ready? All right. all right. I went to the beach. I went to the beach. I bought me a can. No, sorry, it's not like that. There's four, three. Okay, come again. I went to the beach. I went, I went to the beach. I built me a castle. I built me a castle. The waves came a rolling. The waves came a rolling. Ain't got it no more. Ain't got it no more. Ain't got it no more. So now as a teacher, when I became a teacher and I understood, this guy was calming our spirits, mm. getting ready for learning. Yeah. Went to the beach. He built him a castle. The waves came rolling. That's life, adversity, all the things that we go, ain't got in them, all the angst, the anxiety, the nervousness, the whatever we're dealing with. Ain't got it no more, ain't got it no more, ain't got it no more. Shh. That shh was like calm. And he had a different one. Went to, I built me a, I made me a cake, I ate that cake. Mm hmm Like he had a whole bunch of different ones. You know what I mean? And that was Mr. England. So, and I remember he told me, he was real. He's like, listen, you are a young black boy. This world is gonna be tough on you. So I'm gonna be tougher. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah, man, Mr. England changed my life. Like he, he made me love poetry. He made me wanna be excellent. He pushed me to the limits. He's like, I didn't try in school. I was just, just getting by. I didn't care. I was like, it's easy for me. So I was like a, a merit, merit border, borderline honor role student. And then um, the man activated me. He said, listen, you're smarter than all these guys, but you're dumber than all of them because you don't apply yourself. Mm -hmm. These guys actually have to work. You're lazy. You don't work. Apply yourself for one semester and you'll see the difference. And I did. And I got um, principal, whatever, I, I think it's principals this. I got so many future races. Like if I show you my, <laughs> if I show you my book, these, the, and this is, I would say story up, right? Mm -hmm. So these are future races. I could go future race from what, 2000, 2000, I'll find one. A future ace. This is from high school. Future Aces over here. So Future Aces, if you remember Future Aces, Future Aces in TDSB was something, I think it was started by Herb Carnegie, I believe. And it was something that every month they honor a different um, attribute of a student. So it may be like different core values, so like uh, leadership. So you, this assembly, one assembly would be like the leadership assembly. You know what I mean? And the next one would be like... Um, participation or teamwork or everything had a, a different purpose, right? So th the whole point was me, I'm very competitive. So I wanted to get all the, yeah, all the words, all the words. Yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And hold on, I got to find this because it's in here. I, see, I saw it this morning. So anyhow, so Mr. England is pretty much, 
He changed my life so so much so that like I ended up becoming a teacher because he he impacted me so much and he was that representation that I didn't have. So so do do you directly credit him for Ah is he there's a microcosm of people. Right. Mm-hmm. But he like he he plays a big the catalyst. Yeah, a catalyst mm-hmm. at an early age. Ah, right here. See, story up. I'm not playing no games. So I'll pull this up for you. This is this is who this used to be on my wall. I used to have a lot more, but these are the only ones I kept. So this is future aces, right? As you see, future aces. I'll give you one to look at it. I'll give you another one to look at it. You know what I mean? And maybe you guys can read it. What it, each of you read one of it, what it says on it. You wanna go first? <clears throat> yeah, go ahead. August and no, Oban. No, no. Read it from the top. TDS the top. Oh, that's from <laughs> yeah, the top. None of it. Let's go, brother. Come I on, got Lita. you. So, uh, Toronto District School Board. Yeah. Far Grove Public School. Future Ace. Okay. August and Oban is recognized as a Far Grove Ace for his excellent work in art and for demonstrating excellent leadership skills in our classroom. March 2000, and then the pr- principal's signature. And a gold stamp in the right corner. Story up. Receipts. <laughs> That's dope. Receipts. <laughs> That's dope. Thank you. Know you. I mean? So this doesn't look like a future aces one. It doesn't say future this aces like that one does. Okay, what does it say though? So it's got the TDSB logo here in the top, Fur Grove Public School, Augustine Obang. Thank you for participating in the variety show and helping to make the performance a great success. Okay. So tell now, us about the variety show. Okay. <laughs> so now I'm going to tell you about this. Mm. April 2000. So this was like, um, like a talent show. Mm. You know what I mean? And every, we had, we did a dance. Mm. I, honestly, if you know me, I can't dance like that, <laughs> but I know how to bubble. <laughs> if you know what bubbling is, mm. I'm a champion bubbler. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, man. So we did a stand. I think it was Mr. Legault. Hard to find Africans that can't dance. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the, yeah, I I'm like, gonna be real. I can't like I can't dance and do like all the Zanto things and all those things. I don't. I just, I'm a, maybe I'm. I, I think I'm too cool for school. Mm. I just sit back and do a one two. And you know what I mean? But um, yeah, man. So that was a variety show. It's like a talent show that we did at school, and and that's what it is. I'll put it in after. But like, there's so many other awards. But it's not a, not an award show now. It's just about um, in- Mr. England and his impact and why I wrote the book. Mm-hmm. So there's many other teachers as well like and people um, that have impacted me and, and, and influenced me. And that's what the book is about. It's a homage book. Mm. I pay homage to all the people that influenced me, that inspired me, that um, challenged me, that um, just just motivated me to be great. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, talking about that. Speaking of that, actually, um, I I also noticed. I think the, is it the second or third chapter? You also speak about uh, motivated by Junior Kaduga, which is also another alumni from from uh, yeah. So you guys here around the same time. Like, tell tell us a little bit about that. I mean, motivation and inspiration. Man, Junior, Junior. How do I start with Junior, man? Junior Kadugan is a legend. Hmm. He's a legend, legendary, worth the free, legendary, you know. And um, back in the day, if you think about pre-YouTube, mm. there was no YouTube. But Junior's name was ringing bells, mm-hmm. ringing bells. So Junior, ah, Junior. So listen, when you talk about motivation, I loved basketball, man. And so let me tell you how I met Junior. So I met Junior when I was uh I was about to go to grade six. So we had a, a we used to have a tournament in, in connections called the CB, um, CBA Connection Basketball Association. It was run by Blitz and uh I forget her name. And Kofi. Uh, I forget the lady's name. She passed away recently, but like I forget her name. But um so CBA. Blitz, uh, Kofi. So um, we're in a tournament. Like it's like three on three tournament. They had it in the lane two LBA um, in the summertime community event. That's what I'm talking about community. Like mm-hmm. we had community events. There's burgers. There's hot dogs. There's basketball. There's prizes and trophies. 
in my crib, I still have um, trophies from those things. You know what I mean? And so we're playing three on three. Uh, I think we're playing three on three. It was either before the ter- LB, um, CBA or around that time. I think they came to scout the guys before the tournament started. So the guys came across the street. And um, so J- JR Jr.'s name was ringing bells. So I call him JR. So JR's name was ringing bells. Him and Baby J ringing bells. If you know, if you're from Finch, those guys, and there's a bunch of other guys too, but those guys' names are ringing bells. So they came over and they're like, oh, so who's the next guys that are coming over to, to Oakdale? Because I transitioned from Fergrove to Oakdale, right? And then, <laughs> so they're like, oh, um, let's play three on three. So we had it, we can, we assembled our squad. They already had their guys, they had, they had a lot of guys. So we played. And then, and then um, they're like, oh, they're like, oh, this guy, uh, he's younger than you, but he's better than you, right? And they're talking about Jr. And I'm like, what are you talking about, bro? Like, I had a lot of pride. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm a pride. I'm like, yeah, I'm for like, sure. I'm gonna get out of here. You know what you talking about? So we end up playing, and that time Jr. had a high, high pitched voice. You know what I mean? He was, but he was. So we played, and he cooked me. He was cooking us. Yeah. He, we lost pretty much. And then I, so that's when the respect was gave. Like, all right, you came, you did what you got to do. Got to give respect. So I went. To, I was a year older than Jr. So I went to Oakdale. So me and Jr. really became cool at Oakdale. And it's funny because, <laughs> yeah, you ready for the magic show? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I said I went to Oakdale, right? I'm an OP dragon. If you know, if you're from Oakdale, you remember this Oakdale Park. I'm OP dragon, right? So that's where we met Jr. We played on the same team, but if you really went to Oakdale and you really know about Oakdale, and if you're a rival and you know about, so shout out to Mr. M. <laughs> Mr. M, Danny Maskelidis. You cannot change him. Yeah, you can hold that. Um, Mr. M was a serious guy, serious guy. So he made us feel like, I felt like I was in the NBA without being in the NBA. We had Gatorade bottle, we had a like, sticky pad, like Mr. M, Salik, um, Coach McMillan, like a whole, so many people. I know I'm saying names, I said I was gonna say names, but whatever, man. So if you're from Oakdale, we had, we we had, you're gonna remember this jersey because we, we did some things to you guys. And shout out to Lawrence Heights because they were our rivals. You know what I mean? My guys from Jungle. So mm. this is the jersey, you feel me? Oh, they're dragons. <laughs> so listen, throwback. Throw back. Show it to the main camera. Show it to the main Where's camera. Where's the camera? Right here? Here? Where you at? Oh, they're dragons. <laughs> listen, we used to kill everyone in basketball, every sport. And if you went to Oakdale, you got tired of this song too because Mr. M used to empower us with po- positive affirmation. So he used to come in. He used to come after we win a tournament. We won so much tournaments. I used to tell M, like, M, stop playing this song. <laughs> he used to play this song. Um, how's it go? Um, yo, it was like a victory song. Um, not we ready. We, that was what we used to do in one. Um, I just forget it. He played a song. I'm gonna, it's gonna come back to me. Every time we win, it's like, um, um, not we ready. We ready. It's a victory song. Like, not that we are the champion. Yes. We are the champions, my friends. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. We every single like we heard it so much. I'm like, I'm tired of hearing this. Like, mm-hmm. and that just shows the culture that we came from. It's a winning pet culture. So mm-hmm. Junior was so nice. Jr. This is the warm ups. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's what I'm saying. Imagine wearing this as a a grade six kid from Finch, We're having this jersey. This is the real jersey. And then the warm up on top of that with a matching shorts with an orange Gatorade thing with a sticky pad like you're going in the league. Come on, I felt like it was in the NBA. Yeah. Mm. So you're talking about junior motivation. So junior was so nice. When I was in grade seven, he was in grade six, he was starting on the grade 18. Wow. Think about it. Take a second. That's how nice JR was. That's tough. Mm. Yeah. JR, like. <laughs> Like they need to do a documentary on Jr. So where are the documentarians? You got to do the Junior Kadugan story, man. You sitting with him right now? Real one. You sitting with him right now? Real one. You need to do the Jr. Kadugan story. That guy 
is a living legend. Yeah. Ringing bells. Names been ringing bells before YouTube. Mm. And he, he had a summer in CBL, right? Yeah, like yeah. In Vancouver. Come on. Listen, no, we're talking about Marquette. You want to talk about the story, the trajectory? I can tell you the whole story, but JR. We're going to bring it. We'll, hopefully, we'll, we'll get him. we to get JR on here, him, bro. Tell, tell him to a couple. Yo, JR, man. Yo, fam. <laughs> you got to pull up, bro. Yeah. Did you hear the story, my G? Absolutely. The legendary story. A junior kid. I'm not going to ruin it for you. Make him tell the story. Mm-hmm. You understand? But JR is a legend. I'm just going to say the schools. Oakdale. Eastern, Oakdale, Eastern. Um, then he cut to the States. That was God. I think Texas Christian Academy with Olu. Okay. Then Marquette. Mm. Yeah, Marquette led him to Elite, um, Elite 8, 316. He did that. PG. After a torn Achilles, talk to me. Mm. Serious. Oh, that's it. But JR, you're a legend. You done no fam. Keep doing your thing. And just to bring it full circle, right now, he's at my alma mater. So shout out to Junior Kadugan Elite. Shout out to Teaching Ball. Yep. Y'all doing your thing. Shout out to Tosin. Kiddo, you already know. And all the family that, that's there. But like, shout out to Coach Jay Holness, York University's coach. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And I played at York for one year. So talk about being a student athlete. Yeah, this is the, the 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 student part, but yeah, I was a lion. Okay, I was a lion. Okay, <laughs> come on, okay, yep. come on. Okay, you feel me? And this is my jersey, mm-hmm. my actual jersey that I used to wear, brother. Mm. Okay. Yes, and I wore number ten in honor of my big bro, King Beezy. Mm. So you don't know York University, York Lions. Wow. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So, yeah, Jay's a legend, man. That's tough. Motivated. So, uh, quick, how you motivated me? So, I was living vicariously through JR. Mm. He did what we all wanted to do and go to the NCAA. So, I used to watch all his games, first world sports or whatever it was online. Yeah, I was doing it online. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like, and then all these other things just to watch it, find the game. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then one day I was, uh, you know, I was able to save enough money, and I went to go see him play out there and 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 be around, you know, the atmosphere. And so the guy that I was talking to was before this started was Jr's teammate. Shout out to my boy Chris. You know what I mean? Oh, too late, my Niger brother. You understand? Number forty two. So yeah, man. Yo, Jr is a legend, man, and he opened a lot of doors for a lot of people. And he's continuing to do the work right now with Kadugan and Lead and working at York, um, working with the CB, I think Vancouver Bandits. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like he played London. Like, I mean, yeah, Jero, come true. Jero, come true, please. Yeah. No, Definitely. Sure. No, that's huge. That's huge. Representation matters. Always. Yes. You know I mean, it representation does. really matters. You know, so. But yeah. Do you want a million dollar question or? I think, I think before we get into that. Uh, cause we, we, we do have a million dollar question that, yeah, that we ask, that we that. ask everyone, but, we're but, ready. um, before we get there, um, just maybe a piece of advice that, that you can give to, um, youth that are growing up in challenging environments. Mm. What, 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 uh, yeah. What advice can you, can you give them that, um, that can maybe help them along, along their path? All right. Um, first of all. Health is wealth. Shout out to Johnson's Juice. You got yep. to eat well. You are what you eat. You know what I'm saying? Right now, I'm on a journey right now to get back to my my former self, my my prime prime self. So I got to get back to that. So health is wealth, and I'm on that journey. And shout out to Johnson's Juicery for hooking it up. But um, Dennis, yep. Yep. Dennis is the guy. But um, what advice would I give to the to the youth or the younger person that's going through adversity and trying times? Yeah, yeah, and and coming up in a, in in a Finch, challenging environment like Finch, Finch or, or beyond. Yeah. So, one, many of the inner cities are the same. You know what I mean? Like, when you're struggling and and you're trying to, you know, overcome adversity and the odds and beat the odds and the socioeconomic factors and barriers and systemic things that are in your way, it may be daunting. You may feel like there's no hope. Hmm. But what I would say to you, what I would say to you, young man, young girl, um, mother, father, there's hope at the end of the tunnel, right? I'm not here dealing hope. 
you got to you gotta work, though. You got to make the right decision. So what I would say to them is, one, literally take some time to find what your purpose is, man. Mm-hmm. Like detach, detach yourself from, from everybody. You know what I'm saying? Your friends, be, take a moment and really, I like Dragon Ball Z, right? Kamehameha. Yeah. So go into the, see how Goku used to go into the, the hyperbolic time chamber? What he was doing for me was some, what I did when I wrote the book on the reserve. I was away. I detached myself away, away from everyone. Be like a monk in solitude. And if you don't have a place to go, ha- go in your closet. Mm-hmm. Go in your washroom. Go under your, your, your blanket. Find that space and really kind of think about what you want to do in life. Like literally, who you are. Find out who you are. Like once you really take that time to to do that individual soul work, find out who you are. So now, now I'm going to put on my social work hat. Yeah, let's go. You know what I'm saying? Like take a paper. Where you at? You there, there? Where you at? Take a paper. You don't need a book. Take a piece of paper, right? Break it down into four quadrants, right? Four quadrant one, right? In the first box, write mental or mentally. In the second box, write um, physically, physical. Next one, emotional. Next one, spiritual. And now it's an evolution. You're going to add another box or in a circle, whatever. Financial. And really think about how you're doing in those four quadrants. Like, how how are you doing mentally? Do an honest assessment of yourself. All right, I, right now, mentally, I'm not doing... Whatever, write it down. Yeah, write it down. In the box. It's you and yourself. It's you versus you. Me versus me. Mental. Do the same thing for each quadrant. Physical. How are you doing physical? Maybe you're not in shape. You, maybe you, you are in shape and you like it and you're doing a good thing. You want to keep it up. Physical, right? Next, emotional. How are you connecting with your, your people? If you're fortunate to have your parents around or caregivers or guardians, how are you connecting with them? Mm-hmm. How If you have a girl or a guy, or whatever it is, how are you connecting with them emotionally? How are you feeling? Like, how are you feeling on a scale of 1 to 10? How are you feeling? So ask yourself 1 to 10 how are you feeling and then write how you're feeling. And then, emotional, spiritual. If you believe in a higher power, which I do, I'm Christian. I'm Seven Day Adventist. I believe in God, supreme being. All right. So, what is how is your relationship with your whoever you connect with? If you connect with someone, right, or or some entity, God. Okay. So that and then the last one we can't forget about this because you could be right in every other four quadrants but there's another quadrant which is uh, which is financial you got to pay to play yeah ain't nothing free out here where the free is ain't nothing free so you got to those quadrants now that's the first step right how you're feeling now honest assessment then get another paper or flip the page and write, what are you doing in each quadrant to get better? What can I do to be better physically? What can I do to be better emotionally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially? Maybe financially, what can I do? Maybe I'm sitting on my, on my behind and I'm not getting up and I'm not working. Maybe, buddy, I was selling chocolates when I was 10 years old. Mm. Yeah. 10 years old selling chocolates. Why? Because I needed money. And I wanted my own money to do yeah. whatever I wanted to do. I wanted to buy candy and double double. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, double double across the street. Pizza and wings. Fried cheese and gravy. A boutique with the wings on the yeah, side. Yeah, the wings. Come on. Wings hit. The wings hit. But in that foil or go to JD's and get those wings right there. Put the sauce. Shout out to yeah, listen, anyways. Um, yeah, so you do that exercise. I would say do that exercise. And then come back to holla at me. You guys have my thing. Find my find me on the socials, whatever it is, and then holla at me. I'm telling you, that exercise will change your life. That's what I would say. One thing to do. And also, you gotta be humble, man. Humble yourself. Learn from your elders. People know. And 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 obviously you take the wheat from the chaff, right? You take the good things and leave the, the nonsense. But like really like learn from your OGs, your, your parents, your, the, the the role models, people out there, they have a lot of knowledge, right? And 
and and and and seek a mentor. Seek a role model, someone that someone that you wanna you aspire to be like, and humble yourself and ask them, "Can you mentor me? I really want to learn. Can you teach me?" Yeah. I'm telling you, you do those things is more, but you do those things and also read, brother. Read literacy is everything. I remember we used to have a bookmobile. There's no more bookmobile. I haven't seen one in a minute. You know what I'm saying? That's it? Yeah. So if you're out there and you're a sponsor, the Changing Lanes is trying to do a bookmobile. The Changing Lanes mobile, or whatever it is. We drive around in the Changing Lanes mobile and we drop off books. So if you're trying to sponsor, let's connect. You know what I'm saying? But anyhow, York University, what's up, man? Mm-hmm. U of T, what's up, man? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. But yeah, man, that's, that's so those are a few things I would say um, to do. And um, how... You want to just drop your um, your socials and uh, how how people can get in touch with you? Yeah, man. Um, Where they can find the book as well. Also, yeah. Listen, I'm gonna keep it a bean. You could go out to Amazon for the book, but you're not gonna find it. It's there. They're gonna try to sell you a used copy. You want to get the book? Come to the source. Yeah. Come to the source. Go to my website, obanconsulting.com, or just Google it. Google changing lanes. Augustine Obang, or just Google my name, Augustine Obang, York University. Just Google me. Like you're gonna find it. There's a lot of hits. And um, so if you guys are on the socials or LinkedIn, so let's do socials. If you're on IG, a lot of you guys are on IG, Instagram, right? Mm-hmm. So you guys could add me on IG. It's um changing lanes. So just as it's spelled changing lanes, but L A N the number three S. So changing, so I'm going to break it down. You ready? At L, I mean, changing, L-A-N-3-S, right? That's that. If you just want to find me, just go on LinkedIn, man. If you don't have a LinkedIn, go make one. It'll help you. You need one, yeah. You know what I mean? And just type in my name, Augustine Obang, and then everything will pop up. So Augustine, like August, like the month, then you add I-N-E. So August. I-N-E, last name, O as in opportunity, B as in builder, E as in engineering, N as in navigating, G, greatness, obangconsulting.com. That's my website. That's where you can find me. And yeah, man, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just a regular guy. I know like this is supposed to be the outro or the intro. But like it's not the outro because it's more like I'm I'm here for a purpose I'm here for a reason, and I want to thank you guys for for bringing me. But like even deeper, I want to plug my next book for sure. You know what I'm saying? So first of all, I want to plug York University. Shout out to York U because they they put me on the bus stop and through this campaign, this is my time. Dope. So I gotta pay homage and respect to y'all because you guys did the thing because you recognized greatness when you saw it. Mm-hmm. You feel me? That's number one. Then. Nah, we're going to go save that for last. Then I'm going to plug my next book. Actually, I said my next book. My next book, this is my next book. It's called Poetic Panther. You're getting a sneak peek. You see this? This is the, the first copy, one of one. You feel me? This is one of one. So, um, yeah, I'm dropping this soon, real, real soon. So look out for that. It's probably going <clears> to <throat> February. It might come out, of, I mean, soon. It might come out February. It might come out soon. So just look out <laughs> for it. Look out for it. For uh, Poetic Panther, as you see, I got the the merch right Tough here. Jacket, yep. you know what I mean, yep. we ready. Shout out to Changing Lanes. Shout out to Kalani for the jewels. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Keeping me icy. Yeah. But even deeper, I wanna, I wanna, I, I came in for a reason. To this is this is this is a sponsor, one of my sponsors, and someone that really held me down. You know what I mean? And and someone who I hold down. And this is for one of my mentors. So you're gonna see this right now. Pinball, this is for you. So when I see you, this is for you. Just know that. So my brother Free A F R I Y I E came. He told me to bless you with a with a with a with a, with a, with a care pack. So mm. this is the chain. This is the the A and F jacket. You know what I mean? That's tough. This is the A and F jacket. Ain't nothing free. This is my brother Free A F R I Y I E. This is the jacket. You know what I'm saying? A and F. If you listen, there's only about. I think 50 of these copies made. 
So if you ain't got exclusive. it, exclusive, everything's exclusive. Exclusive, over here. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So pinball, this is for you, man. So when I see you, I got you, brother. This is for you. And there's a few other goodies, goodies in the bag. You know what I mean? And I also want to give a huge shout out to to the Blue Jays. You know what I mean? To the Toronto Blue Jays because I was part of rookie ball. I got to play in the Sky Dome. And they really afforded me with an opportunity to play baseball and to, to, to gain meaningful friendships. A lot of people that I met to this day and continue to connect with. So this was a jersey they gave me back in 2002. You know what I mean? At the, at the, the, the Blue Jays Gala. Vernon Wells signed it over here. Yeah, Carlos Delgado over here and some other people. So shout out to the uh, Fergrove Recreation Center. Shout out to Stacy. Shout out to St um, Stevie Kazim. All you guys for holding it down. You know what I mean? Andrew, all you guys. So this is the, the jersey that he gave me, me and my boy, Omar. You done know. We went there, represented, and how we got this, and this is why the power of writing and reading. We had, there's a competition amongst all the, all the people in, that, that played in rookie ball okay. from everywhere in the city. If you know rookie ball, you know rookie ball. So um, it was a competition, and pretty much they asked us to write about how rookie ball influenced your life. Mm -hmm. So I wrote, you know, a, a, about how it influenced my life. And in that, I kind of highlighted like words that spelled rookie ball. So R, I put it like, it, it taught me respect. Um, o, it gave me an opportunity. O, it gave me whatever, you know what I mean? And K, yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah. so I did it like Broke that it down, yeah. to highlight the words. And they're like, yo, this, this is creative, right? And that's just like the variety show, uh, Future Ace thing. What did it say? Augustine has leadership and creative arts. And so I've always been a creative person. So shout out to Rookie Ball because they held me down. And and listen, I gotta give listen, I gotta give another shout out to, to somebody that was a part of the Yates organization that's doing his thing. And and shout out to Pinball because he's instrumental in in, in supporting. And this person was is a, is a really sick baller and he's doing his thing. I'm super proud of him. But shout out to Justin Jackson because he's a real one too. You know what I mean? J yes. J5, you yep. already know, brother. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But this guy is O'Shea. You know what I'm saying? Brissette. Mm. I got a signed jersey from the, when he was on the 905. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And this is it. So O'Shea's on the Celtics right now doing his thing. Yep. So shout big up O'Shea. Shout out O'Shea. He's doing his thing. Mm. He done know. When I come to when I come to Bean Town, I want some tickets, brother. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, I got a shout out. Beyond G, this is the family. Beyond G, this is what it is. Beyond G, beyond greatness. This is the hat that I wore. You know what I'm saying? Limited edition, but these are some kicks. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So we, we, these are designers. You feel me? Yeah. Designed by my boy Jay Chris. And these are the Beyond G Regal ones. It's one of 100 copies made. One of 100. You know what I'm saying? So you can't even cop those. You can't. You, nah, you got to come you, to the you, source. You can't find those. You gotta come to the source. Yeah. These are fresh out the box, you heard? So these are the Beyond G Regals. Those are tough. You know what I mean? So yeah, man. Come rock with us, man. And last but not least, I could have come here without leaving y'all with some gifts. So, oh, okay. You know okay. I mean? okay. I got okay. some gifts for y'all. <laughs> you guys to, 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 to divide it and, and give it to whoever you need. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna bless y'all with the gifts right now. Shout out to Fergo Public School, man. You already know. Shout out to Emery. I'm an Emery Eagle. You already know. But these are the gifts, though. So I know Yates. Man, I feel like for you, nah, you're taller. I feel like for you, you got to get the Army joint. Kill, this is kill, the Army kill, 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 changing kill. lanes joint. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. this is for you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then you got to switch or trade, whatever you got to want to do. I hear that stuff. You know what I'm saying? And this, nah, I think this one for you, brother. You got to get the black. This right here is a changing lanes. Uh, the silky joint. Oh, that's it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, okay, okay. This is for you right here. You know what appreciate I mean? You, appreciate you. Love is appreciate love. You, you know what I'm saying? And I got some for the thank kids you. too. Thank you. Thank so you. I got some stuff. I, I got this. You can give this to, I think. Oh, I like that. That's a purple. This is the Ace Purple. Yeah, yeah, purple. purple. I could have not come here without, without the Ace Purple. So mm. you can get this to one of the youths or. Mm -hmm. or, or one of the staff, or maybe Marina, I don't know, somebody could get this. You know what I mean? So this is a Yates Purple. It's tough. And it's yeah, tough. man, there's some amazing. more goodies I'm going to deal with y'all later. But amazing, amazing. Listen, I really appreciate you guys for having me. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me on your platform mm -hmm. and giving me the opportunity to talk about changing lanes. Yep. You know what I mean? Um, 
changing lanes like really like this changed my life um writing this made me it empowered me to believe that like i could really accomplish anything i put my mind to seeing something from inception from your mind and actually making it become a reality is awesome and and you could do it too man anybody could write their story if you really want to write your book and you haven't any questions whatever just reach out hit up the guys from yes and they'll hit me up and we'll connect so connect with yes man yes it's instrumental, man. I've been doing community work since I was 17. I'm 34 right now. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you know, along the way, we lost a lot of people. And RIP to the lost ones and the ones that are no longer here. You know what I mean? We love y'all, and we're doing this for you. And, yeah, man, the journey and the marathon continues, and we change the ladies. But Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep, yep, yep. No, it's love, it's love, it's love. Okay, I think we're, I think we're ready. Oh, a million dollar question, right? Yeah, a million dollar question. Right, let's, do let's get it. <clears throat> I have two for him though. The other one might make people stop listening to our podcast, but <laughs> I just stick to one. You know? The first one is this. All right, let's get it. Who's the goat when we're talking ball? Right? What's the goal? Who's the goat? Who's the goat when we're talking ball? When we're talking ball. Come on, bro. And this is this not even a question. And I'm just gonna point to something you're gonna know. Who is this color? The bean. Mm. That's why I always say I'm going to keep it a bean. Kobe, Jelly, Bean, Brian, brother. Mm. That's the goat of all goats. I'm ki- yes. No Michael Jordan in it. Did I stutter? <laughs> Kobe, Jelly, Bean, Bryant. Number two, four. Mm. And that was my number when I wore it. I was playing at Yates when we had the black stitch joints. Mm. 24. But my number before was eight. It's Kobe, brother. Mm-hmm. And the only reason why my number at, at Oakdale was 15, because I'm born on the 15th, mm-hmm. and VC was the man yeah, them yeah, times. Yeah. Okay, so okay, shout okay, out to okay. Vince Carter. Yeah. But deeper, Kobe Bryant Better than his is teacher? the GOAT. Rest in power. He's the GOAT. Period. He's the Billy GOAT. <laughs> and just because he's not around right now, people are slandering his name. But if Kobe was here, y'all would have paid respect. Absolutely. So Kobe's the GOAT, and that ain't never going to change. Just mm-hmm. like Jigga's the GOAT. Yeah, it's Jigga. So here's a, here's a second one that I was thinking about not bringing up, but I'll bring up. Okay. Since you say you're from Ghana, right? Yeah. There's this huge conversation that happens with uh-huh. Ghana and Nigeria. You know, <laughs> fam. This, this is a question, but let me, I won't let you finish. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. So <laughs> if I had to ask you, yeah, which one prevails as yeah. the best, Ghanaian jollof or Nigerian jollof and why? Okay, listen, I'm going to keep it a beat. This is an age-old debate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Me, I want problems always. <laughs> it's Ghana all day, every day. You feel me? All day, every day. Okay. Anyway, it's GH all day. Listen, if you... Brother, it's it's not even a question. I love my Nigerian brothers. Mm-hmm. How far, how far, I day, I day. <laughs> Listen, but th- when it comes to the jollof, you know day... You know, day, but it's our love. It's the kind of way. It's love. You don't know. Um, it's, honestly, it's all about preference. People like mm-hmm. different things, yeah, sure. different strokes for different folks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I, I go to Ghana way or no way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yes, so sir. I expected no less. But yo, hold yeah, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Less. Shout out to Rumors because Rumors be holding it down, man. My mm-hmm. boy Rumors is a great restaurant. You can go over there. You get some nice jollof. But if you want the real jollof, you go to Afro Continental. Mm-hmm. They'll deal with you. You know what I mean? You got Afro Continental. They'll deal. Go to right. Golden Gate. There's a few other places. But like, yeah, man. Yeah, bro. Right, bro. Yeah, man. Well, we we just we, we want to thank you for for doing this, for coming through, showing us some love, chopping it up with us. Um, go out and get yourself a copy of this book. Mm. He's already told us how you can get a copy of it. We'll have uh, links in the description of this episode and also on screen of how you can get in touch and uh, and how you can get your hands on a copy of this book. Um, yeah, thank you. No problem, thank you. man. We, Thanks we, for we having appreciate me. Appreciate you. And guess what? One last thing. Yeah, I'm gonna give a giveaway. See these three books? They're gonna be at Yates. I'm gonna sign them, and they're gonna be at Yates. But here's the thing: in order to get the books, you gotta write about how you have changed lanes in your life. What are you doing to change lanes in your life? And then you're gonna send it to Jones and the guys here, and we'll screen it, and they'll get the thing. And if you, and out of the the three. The best one out of the three, I'm going to beam you up with some gear. So just let me know your size, and I'll deal with you guys on the back end. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yes, sir. Sure, sure. I hope you heard that. Just remember, it's never too late 
to change lanes, baby. Let's go. Yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> it's been another episode of the Yates Time Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Catch us on the next one. Peace. So.